Hey everybody, Steve here with fun at the WPI district event. I'm here with 125 The Neutrons. They're currently sitting as the, the Alliance 2 captain. You guys have been rocking it all day. You guys, I mean, you always have a great bot, but you got some really consistent, really awesome systems we're gonna be taking a look at today. Who am I talking with? Marta, Ethan, and David. All right, let's jump into it, guys. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. This is our robot this year. We call it Phase Shift. Um, it consists of about a few mechanisms here. We have our biggest one here is our coral manipulator, our algae manipulator. We have our funnel, which takes our coral, our ground intake in the back, if you're able to get in there, uh, which is used for L1 scoring. And then on the other side, we have our climber. Um, so, you want to get started with the coral manipulator? Yeah. So this year, we we're looking very early on on what we do for scoring coral. We are looking at like you know that the big elevator and our single manipulator in the middle. And then we like put some prototypes together and we saw that maybe we could fit something like in between the two pegs of the reef. And so we decided that we would score coral on both sides. However, to do that, we would need to make something that would swing. So we came up with this idea right here. So this is our coral end effector right here. It consists of a single crack and X44 in the middle here. And we have to do lots of packaging to get this uh, as compact as we can and make sure that it works reliably. So we spent a lot of time designing the gearbox for this. And on top of this, this also pairs with our algae manipulator up here. So this algae manipulator is really cool because it only has a single driven arm, which is this one. But then the other one is basically a passive spring loaded arm right here. So the tension in this belt will keep it in the distance it needs to be at and we can use this to, to process algae, pick up from the reef, and even ground intake as well. So one thing, one cool thing we do, we call it the swap, is where we have a coral in our manipulator, and we can go up to the reef which, and basically grab an algae, and at the same time, score a coral, and then we can do whatever we want with the algae after that. Awesome, I mean, you guys got a lot of fidget motors. What, are, what kind of motors are you using to power all these, you know, tiny little things in here? Yeah, so the end effector is all X44s. So that way we can get all our packaging like done really nice and compact. And this has really helped us to get, make our idea come to life, basically. Cool. So moving from that, we also have our elevator this year. So based on the idea that we want to be in between the two uh, reef poles, we decided that we really need that skinny elevator. So we have a two-stage elevator with our carriage, right? So we use all off-the-shelf parts, everything, and it's geared really for high speeds. So it's only like a six to one ratio, I think, with two uh, Krakens on it. So we're able to score really fast and extend really fast as well. And that helps us get faster cycle times, auto and tele off, things like that. Awesome. What have you guys been getting approximately for cycle times? I know you're quick. Um, yeah, really measured, but maybe like five, seven ish, or wow, seconds maybe. Um, to feed all of this end effector stuff, we have our funnel right here. So, this is what yep. we call the Rocky Mountain uh, funnel. It's basically because our wheels are at an angle. So, we came up with this idea. It basically vectors it downwards and to help with that vectoring. We actually have a servo with a cam in the middle to actually kick our coral upwards, and that way we're able to reliably feed into our end effect. So this is different from our other belt design we had at Greater Boston, and it has been working a lot better. And continuing with the coral stuff, we have our ground intake at the back. So this is for L1 only, as we figured that we couldn't really score L1 with our main coral manipulator. So this just ground intakes uh, coral and spits it L1 really fast, really simple. We can also triple stack 
as well if you need to. We have two set positions for that. I think that covers it. All right, uh, you guys want to put this on the ground and show it off for us a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So early on in this game, we, kn we knew that we wanted to focus on having a nice, fast, consistent lineup since there's so many places you have to score on the reef, on the barge. So because of that, we wanted to make sure the driver experience was very seamless. So we used controller states. Um, we have back buttons on our controller, so we're able to control all the states of our robot, whether we want to score L1, L2, L3, or L4. And along with that, once we actually have an algae, we have a wide zone at the barge. So instead of the driver having to control whether they want to score at the barge, they just get in that zone based on odometry, and then they just score at the barge. And that's due to us having only one singular Limelight 4 on our robot, so there are no conflicts with other cameras. And that, uh, that's synchronous along with the coral manipulator. So instead of having to line up to one left camera or one right camera, or having to line up left justified or right justified set of tag, all we have to do is line up center justified and then move that coral manipulator along with our elevator. All right, and that's due to us having a nice wide intake. Uh, you can see here, it's very, very simple uh, for any human player to feed, not just our human players. And then that allows us to, there's a top sensor here and a servo. The servo helps the coral actually have a better handoff into the coral manipulator since it might not always be at the perfect ang angle depending on how we feed. And that just, um, it's, we have two beam breaks right here that actually detect whether we have the coral. And along with that, we have velocity, um, velocity controlling whether we detect an algae or not. Uh, and along awesome. with that, uh, we have the same lineup command as we do in Teleop and Autonomous. So it allows us a really nice um, synchronous and wide zone at the reef where we are able to, the driver is able to just hold a button and all they have to do is hold that button and have a coral and they just go and score. It makes it really easy to drive, really understandable um, to fix anything, whether anything goes wrong, we have fail saves, whether we uh, lose a coral, something happens, a coral gets stuck. Uh, we have fail for all of those, along with the algae. If algae gets stuck, we have uh, algae just spit it out, right? Uh, along with that, once we actually swap an algae from the reef and score a coral at the same time, once we actually extend down to L1, we know that we already want to spit to the processor or just spit out anywhere on the field, right? Because after we're swapping from the reef, we don't, um, we don't retract the elevator uh, to go barge, right? So uh, all of those work together to make sure that we have nice uh, autonomous sequence um, along with Teleop. And if you take a look over here at our driver station, you can see how our all of our autonomous actually build off of each other. So all of our autonomous um, autos, they all build off of separate paths that are stringed along from the human player to the reef. And that th those work synch synchronously with our lineup command. So, the backup and retract that the elevator does after we score is actually built into the line of command, so it does, we don't have to do that manually um, in path thing. Um, if you want to, very interesting. Start All right, when you uh, show lineup. us this thing in action. So you can see right here when we start intaking, that's when we reach the intaking zone. We have a nice wide intaking zone. So basically on half of the field, we're always intaking no matter where we are. Because at the human player station, we might not always receive the coral at the same time, right? Yeah, it's definitely something we've seen that's been making a huge difference for a lot of teams. You see right there was our uh, automatic backup and retract that we do so that we're not in risk of our core manipulator breaking or clipping on the reef. All right. Let's see that one more time. Man, it's, it's so quick. This is why I don't like playing against you guys. It's so quick. All right, well, guys, you guys have built an amazing robot. You guys always do. Uh, like I said, you guys are second seed Alliance captain, so good luck with the rest of the day, but I think you're going to kill it. And I'll see you guys at DCMP. Thank you. All right. That's right, you guys have a climber. Yeah, so um, we just want to touch, you want to turn the robot around? So for our climber here, uh, if you want to deploy. So basically, when we're trying to line up with the cage, we deploy, and then we use this 
V here, the V-shaped polycarb plate to guide ourselves into the cage. And then once we get close enough, we're able to grab one of the bars of the cage with these two knives right here. It, it pushes in and it gets locked in where it's only able to spring out one way. So this gets locked in. And then the bottom of the cage is essentially held down with these four pointed stars. So when we release our, our cage is grabbed and pulled up while still being held down at the bottom to hold our position and help us keep the cage from sliding down or up these knives. And at the same time, we have this opening here in the funnel to allow us to bring the cage in and give us room to pull in. As well as the ground intake slightly deploying outwards to help shift our center of gravity in a way that we're able to have a more balanced climb. Nice. I, I really like that climber. It's a very different design that we're seeing from a lot of box and it, it's definitely working for you guys. Yep. All right. I think we can wrap this thing up real again. Like I said, Alliance 2 Captain doing awesome. Going to continue to do awesome. Have a great rest of the day, guys. Too. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.